Hello everyone. My name is Shantanu Joshi. I'm from the first year of MBA SIDTM, and with me I have Amrita. Amrita, please introduce yourself. Amrita, I guess you're on mute. Can you just check? Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Amrita Loda, and uh, I have done my Bachelor of Commerce from International Institute of Professional Studies, DEV Indore. And here we are to help you with the art of time management, SNAP 2023. Um, Shantanu, I think we should wait for a little to let everybody join. Then we'll continue. Yes, yes. We'll wait for a minute or two, let everybody join, and then we'll get going with our webinar. Yeah. I think let's get started with the webinar. Amrita, are you with me? Yes, Shantan. Yeah. Okay. So, hello everyone. Today, I and Amrita are going to talk about the art of time management uh, for SNAP 2023. As we all know that we are very close to the SNAP exam. Uh, we are aware that we have the CAT exams first on the 26th, but after that, uh, very soon we are going to give snaps the first attempt it is very few days remaining for that and i think uh, other than the study is one more very important factor that is time management is needed to be talked about right so i'll be guiding you through the introduction of uh, some of the few pointers and we will discuss it thoroughly throughout the webinar so i'll be talking about the first pointer that is planning and preparation 
so while talking about the planning and preparation the basic or the first step in any planning is that while solving any kind of question let's say you are solving a sectional test or let's say you are giving a mock the first thing you have to do according to time is that you have to set up a clock you have to set up a timer that in what amount of time are you able to solve let's say quantitative ability or verbal ability or logical reasoning so that you have a good idea of what you are doing right and what you are doing wrong talking about the pace and strategy so most importantly uh, all the students will be following some of the other strategy uh, it is not necessary that everyone should follow the same strategy but it is very necessary that everyone should have a strategy right so maybe some may att uh, attempt a va portion first some may attempt the lr portion first some may attempt the quantitative ability portion first that is on them to choose uh, however it helps them but do not approach it randomly because if you approach it randomly there is you may fail right so you have to try out your strategy in, in different mocks or different sectional tests so that you have a good idea that which strategy is working for you and uh, you, in which strategy are you scoring the most right so afterwards comes the elimination and deduction as we all know that while talking about snap it is only a one hour exam and we have 60 questions so approximately we only have one minute per question so if there is a difficult question as we all know that uh, there are easy moderate as well as difficult level questions in snap but let's say if there is a difficult question and it requires 2 to 3 minutes then you have to make the right guess and skip the question because if you are able to solve let's say two or one or more questions in that time that is more beneficial for you and educated guessing uh, let's talk about verbal ability here so if let's say there is a word where you have to guess the meaning you have to tell the antonym you have to tell the synonym so uh, not necessarily you know the meaning of the word right but you can have a educated guess looking at the prefix looking at the suffix or something like that so you should be fast uh, make while making a guess because there's no time to spare at all and time management and tracking obviously because while talking about a exam like snap time is very essential because the higher you score it is better for you for the next part i would like amrita to take over Yeah. So, guys, understanding the SNAP exam. As we know, the SNAP exam pattern has been same for two to three years, or uh, from a particular period of time. Uh, let's talk about the sections out here. So, the sections the same, uh, like in ANMAT, like in CAD, but the level of difficulty is quite easier here. So, there's three sections in SNAP exam: English, Logical Reasoning, and Quantitative Aptitude. So, basically, 15 questions from English come in SNAP exam, 25 from LR, and 20 from Quantitative Aptitude. The level of difficulty will be very moderate to easy level. It will not be that level of difficult difficulty because I feel that SNAP exam is all about speed. Speed. If you are if you are managing your time well, if you are speedy enough, then you can help it and you can actually crack the SNAP exam. So it's not about uh, covering all the topics. It's not about knowing all the things, but it's about if you are correcting, if you are uh, able to uh, answer the questions in well of time, then you can just crack the exam. If we talk about the marking systems, one number will be uh, awarded to you for your correct answer and 0 0.25 will be the negative marking for each question wrong the answer. So discussing further, let's talk about the time management principles section wise. Talking about the verbal ability, guys, I feel this is uh, from my personal experience has been the area where you can score, where you can actually increase your cutoff. There are so many topics out in here. Uh, like grammar, parajumbles, compound and nouns, spelling errors for gaps. There are so many topics, but it is not something you can skip to. It is something like you can cover it all in very few days because the questions which are being there in SNAP are very easy to crack. It is uh, about reading on a daily basis, reading various, like you can read anything. You can read articles, your favorite books, you can read social media pages too, but it's all about reading. If you're good at reading, if you're good at speed, if you know that okay, I'm getting the main idea of these questions, you can crack verbal ability. So there are some tips I want to give you on how to crack verbal ability section. So number one will be the reading speed. The more you read, the more you practice, the more you know that, okay, the context, the main idea of this passage, this question, this collective, this collective particular question is this. And you can easily have that ability to crack that question. So practice will increase that it is not about you just go to the snap exam or knowing the basic concepts because it is a speed based based exam it is crucial for you to be efficient in that so just practice more and more just focus on understanding the main context of the passage of the question you have given so 
even if you get the idea that okay this question is something i cannot attempt this question will be not correct for me to skip it because in snap it's not about attempting all the questions but it's about correcting the uh, evaluating and correcting the like uh, uh, correct questions for you because everybody is not good at everything so you'll have to prioritize you'll have to manage that this these questions i'll be attempting these questions i'll be good at so yeah uh, let's talk about topic grammar para jumbles reading comprehension figure of speech parts of speech corrective noun compounded noun the syllabus will be like if talk about if we are talking about syllabus the syllabus is wide but uh, it is not that difficult that you have you will be if you are preparing for cat or anna from a long period of time then it will be very easy to cover for you in the snap exam because the level of difficulty will be very easy so uh, number 2 will be the prioritizing questions thing uh if you know how to prioritize if you know that this is the area i can be very productive at and this is the area i'm weak at if you know and if you can analyze it very very well that yeah this will save my time and this will waste my time if i try to attend this questions even after very strong attempts so yeah that is something you should be able to know in the paper too because you just have 60 minutes you will be given 1 minute for each question so if you are attempting one question in 30 seconds if you are attempting one question in 2 minutes you should know what will be beneficial for you so yeah you should know to prioritize your questions allocate more time to direct questions there are so many direct questions which will be there in verbal ability so yeah uh, give more preference to de- them and there will be a yellow kind of mark when you'll you'll be skipping questions so just attempt to key uh, the direct questions first and keep the tricky questions for the later part because that will save your time uh now let's talk about vocabulary guys just skip your uh, reels and social media pages for some time read some articles read some kind of just listen to some podcasts listen to some people who are talking about vocabulary you can approach them in youtube on youtube on linkedin on on any platform read anything anything you have interest in but just read because reading will help you a lot even if you are read, you have read something and it's coming exam you will just have a click in your mind that okay i have read it somewhere and i can answer it reading will help you a lot from my personal experience i have um, i attempted snap last year and i have read like multiple articles multiple books which i which i had interest in and it helped me a lot it was not that kind of grammatical book that which had so much of knowledge which has so much of you know heavy heavy words but only reading can help you so yeah that is all about verbal ability uh, lr and quants will be explained to you by shant thank you amrita those tips were really helpful uh, now let's shift uh, our focus to analytics and logical reasoning before going to analytics and logical reasoning or qa i just want all of you to understand that there is a golden rule which i followed during my preparation of snap so no one is going to look at what questions you solved okay so it doesn't matter if you are skipping the difficult ones because rather that is the better choice to skip the difficult ones and spare some time for the easy ones and solve more questions so let's say out of 60 there are 8 or 10 questions which are difficult and you just come uh, and solve like 50 and 52 and you get 45 to 46 of them correct that is a wonderful score that is better than wonderful so that is what you all should follow that don't try to uh, make like get emotionally occupied with the question that okay ye ho nahi raha hai to kar hi denge don't get that approach uh, just solve the easy ones jo ho raha hai wo kar do and now let's get into the topics of analytics and logical reasoning so as we can see here uh the topics as you all know that coding decoding number series input output the, these are the number of questions that are usually repeated in snap the number may change it is uh, this data is according to the past data so don't like it it is how snap follows but it may change so let's talk about categorizing questions so let's say if you are very good with clocks calendars family diagrams tree diagrams as we call them so why not just get them first Uh, get them on a notepad or something what you have a piece of paper and a pen just try to solve them get it solved and then you can directly answer the question but let's say if you are halfway there and you are not able to solve it but if it's on the notepad and if you have some time to get back to the question the half solved problem will be there and it will save you time right so keep a practice of using a notepad and a pen while solving each and every small questions so you don't miss any detail out of it right and then prioritize based on your strengths obviously if you are not good with number series let's say or you, if you are not good with input and outputs 
just skip them and move to the easier ones okay quick decision making as i have mentioned before you have to make your decision very quickly because in the first second in the first 10 seconds of reading a question you know if you are you are going to be able to solve this in one minute or not so you have to trust your instincts you have to train yourself in that way that if it is a difficult question you will be skipping it or rather coming it to uh, coming back to it after some period of time okay then avoid spending too much time on a single problem uh, let's say if in the first uh, initial 5 seconds you think that this problem is solvable but uh, after spending like 40 to 45 seconds you understand that we cannot solve it so just leave it there and move to the another question keep it there mark uh, mark that then you can come back to it later just don't waste time because that is the main thing in snap because if you give any other exam such as cat and mat you have ample of time with you right so you can literally uh, spare spare some time and then come back to the questions later but in snap you cannot do that so it is like you only see the question once so you have to be very quick with the decisions then mindful reading so this is one very small and generic kind of a tip but it is very useful if you focus on it right so most of the times so sol- solving a question of analytics and logical reasoning you don't happen to find the logic behind a problem but if you read the question neatly with a calm mind again and again you can find the answer right there itself because we tend to miss out on small small details which have the answer okay so that is what are the tips for analytics and logical reasoning basically these are the generic tips which can be applied to any kind of a section but most importantly these tips were relevant to analytics and logical reasoning that is why they were presented here now let's move to quantitative data interpretation and data sufficiency so as we can see here uh, here are data interpretation ratios percentages pnl so as we all know that in cat if you have a question there can be sub questions like two to three or four questions or maybe last year uh, as the pattern went there uh, there were five questions on the set but in snap you wouldn't find the set it ha- it is going to be a independent question right so in this period of time you have to take the decision that if the question is lengthy if you are not able to solve it you have to skip it because data interpretation can get a bit lengthy it is obviously easier or moderate level but it can get difficult at times for people uh formula familiarity i guess this was a topic uh, taken up by shan my uh, colleague uh, which took the last webinar he mentioned that if you are good with fa- uh, formulas your quants is good to go and that stands here because if you know some uh, easy tricks of percentages ratios sic averages mean averages logs and what not if you have them handy if you by heart them then you can easily solve any kind of question in qa and uh, even the question makers know that if you have that one point and if you crack that formula or that particular thing the question is very easy data interpretation strategy scan data interpretation send bits before solving obviously so let's say you are very comfortable with pie charts and you see a pie chart so that is your stand go to it jump to the question solve it and then go to other questions it is not necessary to follow a sequence right if you are good with bar graphs histograms same same thing identify easier questions with such time saving techniques skip complex situations if they consume too much time right so uh, also it has been given that optimize the use of on screen calculator Uh, but there are two sides to this part so uh, maybe the infrastructure in which center you give the exam may not be very good the mouse may not be very good it may be slow so you cannot take the risk of the on screen calculator if you are good with it nothing nothing like it but i would suggest that making a habit of use of a pen and a paper is the best habit because in that way you can recheck it so it doesn't go away right and if there is a complex situ- complex situation where it is going some decimal kind of questions again leave it the golden rule as i mentioned before there's no one judging you on which questions you solved everyone is going to judge you on the basis of score so the most important part is to solve more and more questions and have the highest accuracy i guess a good accuracy so let's say you're solving approximately 10 questions so you have to get eight of them right because while studying for different and different exams snap is i wouldn't say easy but comparatively a moderate exam compared to other ones and it is very easy to crack because if you know the uh, uh, gist of it you can crack it and also we have three attempts right so you can prepare your strategy you can change your strategy you can give it all now let's talk about the study plan that we have made uh, i guess amrita will be a better person to explain this further amrita uh, yeah yeah sure 
I think Shantanu has mentioned that it is all about your strategy. It is how you take it. So it is not uh, a specific or subjective plan that everybody should follow, but it is a little kind of our plan that we used to follow or people should follow for it, like 14 days because we have approximately 10 to 20 days left for the first snap attempt. And you guys really need to buckle up, bundle up for the first attempt, which is going to be there on 10 December. So yeah, there's a little plan, 14 day study plan we have met, made for you all. Uh, to brush up your uh, uh, normal concepts. So yeah, for the first week, one to th first to third day, I feel you should really uh, brush up all your concepts which you have studied in CAD and MAD or basically what you have studied all the year. So basically all the students who are appealing for SNAP have a little knowledge about everything, uh, every concept which is going to be there in SNAP because they, are, they were already preparing for uh, CAD or and MAD. The concepts which are going to be in uh, going to be there in SNAP are totally related to CAT and, and MAT pattern, just on an easier level. So I feel you should cover up first year all the concepts, all you have studied in the one year, because that is something you have. That is something you actually need to dash up. So yeah, understand all the concepts, know your weaknesses. There will be some points, there will be some concepts and topics which will you be weak at. So just know about it, just analyze your strengths and weaknesses, and you have a lot of time there in the coming week so just know that okay this is something i'm weak at i'll be going to a you can have anything you can go to a mentor you can opt for a online resource so there's a lot of sources for you know getting knowledge about those topics too because there are some topics in snap which are very really important uh like we can talk about the drama section the vocab section and verbal ability it is not something you can skip and because the questions are very easy which are going to be there in snap so my advice will be that don't skip any topic just read about it brush up your topics and if you're really facing a problem uh just talk to a mentor just go to an online resource so yeah from uh, first to third day just brush up your concepts and know your weaknesses in the coming days uh four to six day uh i would uh advise you to attempt mocks just go for mocks practice daily because in snap speed is all about what makes it uh, a good score so i feel you should attempt mocks on a daily basis we at sibtm also provide mocks um we'll mention the uh, mock links in the comment section so that you can register register for it um other than that you can also if you are uh, um join if you have joined any online institute or offline institute for preparation just ask them for mocks because mocks will help you a lot. Practice will help you a lot. It will help you to identify your strengths, which will help you to manage your time in SNAP. Because if you know that, yeah, this is something I'm good at, you'll be attempting those questions first. So yeah, that is something which will, you know, help you and which will actually help you to make your own strategy in SNAP. So yeah, brush up and then practice regularly mocks. Give mocks as much as you can. At least two mocks a day will can be your target. Snap mocks are very like it is just one hour test. So practice it and just two mocks per day can can be your goal. So yeah, that is something uh, I would advise for the four to six day. Coming to the seven to nine day where where your second week will be started and snap will be you know pressure will be all there. So you'll be thinking about, OK, I don't know this. I don't know that. So in that time, just analyze what are your, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. Make a plan according to that. Like uh, we can say that you're good at verbal ability. You know that I'll be able to crack it even if I get, uh, give 30 minutes per day to this. And you're a little weak at LR or you're a little weak at points. Just make a plan according to that, that OK, from now onwards, I'll, I'll give two hours to this section i'll giving i'll be solving more quants questions i'll be attempting sectional mocks of quants and i'll be focusing a little less on other sections because you are good at it so make your own plan make your own strategy make your own adjustments according to the mock you have given previously but don't stop giving mocks continuously analyze your strengths and weaknesses make adjustments give please be aware of your strengths and weaknesses because that is something which will be very helpful in SNAP. Knowing your strengths and weaknesses, knowing your good points and weak points will help you a lot in SNAP. Yeah. So, next slide. Yeah. So, 10 to 12 day. Um, 
uh, well, Snap will be like there, uh, will be nearby uh, on the 10th, 12th day on uh, People for People who will be giving uh, on attempt on 10th December. Um, I would advise you to please be familiar with the format of exam. There will be only 60 minutes will be given for the attempt and you should know that you will be given only one minute for each question. So please be very familiar with the format of exam, which can only be done if you attempt mocks. Please practice mocks, please give tests, because that, that is something which will help you a lot. Yeah, and um, if uh, we talk about what, what, what will help you uh, other than that time management and familiarity of exam, it's your confidence. If you're confident enough that, okay, I'm good at it, don't, don't just, you know, uh, let yourself go into that i should know this too i should know this too i'll be going more and more and i'll be learning more no uh well your snap is arriving on the eighth day uh we can say that on 7th or 8th december or on the 6th or 7th december just go with the flow just know that okay i know this and i'll practice this only because every year the pattern changes every year the number of questions of topics which are going to be there will be different so just brush up what you know just be more confident. Just be like, okay, I'll I'll give the attempt because there are three attempts of SNAP. Even if you uh, score a little less in first attempt, you still have two more attempts to be there. So yeah, uh, be confident enough and have a good sleep before the exam. On the 13th day, eat a healthy breakfast. Guys, uh, it's very important to uh, be healthy on the exam day uh, because I feel uh, from like last year when I attempted SNAP, uh, it was not a normal day for me. Uh, it was a little like okay, exam day, exam day, but don't treat it like that way. Keep it a normal day that it is a normal day. I'll be going to be there for just one hour. Eat a healthy breakfast, relax and stay focused. Be confident and I think you'll be able to crack SNAP very easily and day 14 take your snap exam best of luck yeah uh i feel uh we have made a 31 days uh roadmap for snap who for people who have who will be attempting three snaps attempt so i feel shantanu uh you should allow yes i'll take it ahead yeah. yeah thank you so much thank you so much so let's talk about the roadmap for 31 days to snap so as we all know that maybe maybe all not all of you will be attempting all the three attempts of snap right so maybe some much, someone must be attempting the last one someone must be attempting only the first one but my suggestion is try to attempt all of them because you never know which kind of set is preferable for you so you don't have to take chances right there are very great institutes in, inside symbiosis and you don't have to you don't want to take a chance regarding that so let's talk about giving sectional and full length mock tests so one interesting part about sectional tests, I would like to tell you that let's say that you have been preparing and there's always your forte, right? So if you know that I'm good in verbal ability, so maybe you will be practicing that for a certain period of time and you know that, okay, I'm scoring good. It is all good and it is good to go. The, even if I practice it a little bit less, that is fine. So at that point of time, you don't have to take a full length mock test because what will that do is you will be wasting one full hour. So at that period of time, you can focus on Kiwi or LR, right? So by doing all that, when you know that you are confident with all the three sections at that particular time, after that, you can move to the full length mock test. So it will save your time. And then you will be confident enough to go for the full length mock test and analyze each section. So if you're going, if you're doing sectional tests or let's say full length mock test, it is very important to analyze each section. Uh, even I, I would say that uh, while you're solving any question, for particular question, set up a timer. So you know that what topic is consuming the most time and then you can work on it. Because many a times we waste more time on easy topics. So you can analyze that, do some do's and don'ts, go through that and then make your decisions, right? And uh, practice the topics which are your strengths. So this is a very different kind of a tip, right? Because you must be thinking that I should practice what I'm weak at. But it is not the case. Because what we tend to do is, let's say one person is go uh, good at QA. And he stops practicing, he focuses on LR, he focuses on verbal ability. And at the end of the day, because it is out of practice, you are not able to solve the QA questions. So that must not be the case. Even if you are good with it, maybe uh, let's say a lot less time, but do practice it. So if, uh, if you are practicing LR two times a day, three times a day, you are practicing uh, verbal ability for two times a day, four times a day, uh, maybe solve QA for once a day, but do that and figure out your weaknesses. So once you know that what your weaknesses are, this competitive exams gives you a chance to skip them. So let's say you're not good with certain topics in QA. So you can skip them 
you can shift your focus to arithmetic and try to solve as much as questions from them also uh, snap doesn't have a uh, sectional cut off so that is also a benefit for all of you so in that manner you can make your strategy and prepare for snap now let's talk about the time table so uh, this time table has been shared by us many a times but again everyone can have their own time table so let's say someone is trying to give it all in the first attempt you can do that it is your call but it is what the it is what we have followed right so uh, when i scored 92% in snap this is what i followed so phase one target score 25 to 28 so at that time i was practicing mocks but every year you uh, come to understand that there is a different kind of a format for each and every exam so you can just guess you cannot literally tell accurately that what kind of exam will it be so there may be different questions different forms of questions you never know there may be sets sets of questions coming so at that time phase 1 which was the first attempt i gave uh, i gave it a try i was just taking a guess that how the format is what what is new what is old what has been repeated what kind of topics are coming and i tried to score somewhere around 25 28 30 so that that's a decent score that is not a very good score but that's a decent score to get an idea of the exam phase 2 target score 32 to 35 so at that time i know the format okay so now i'll be working on the topics which i have to focus on and then i'll go for the score where i know ki okay maine weakness pe kaam kar liya maine strengths pe kaam kar liya so uh, again ye thoda half prepared ya let's say 75% prepared kind of attempt hai. but ta- talking about the last attempt that is where we are targeting score of 39 to 42 at that time you are very well versed with the format of snap you are very wo- well versed with your topics you are very well versed with the time management yes you can do this if you are practicing some strategies in the mocks you can try out the strategy in the first attempt you can use it however so that is the flexibility snap gives you it it gives you three attempts right so you can plan out you can plan out your strategy as as you want but this is a kind of a timetable that we have chosen so you can refer to it or anything you like so i would like uh, to ask amrita to talk about this like pushing yourself through the last yeah so guys uh, pushing through the last minute i feel that as we have covered everything you should be doing in the last weeks of snap exam there are some point is also we would like to uh, tell you uh, on the last minute you should be going to yeah so remember your goals uh, we have been every student have been preparing for snap and mat cat from the last year or some may be preparing with like two years of experience kind of thing so just remember your goals remember that okay i have i'm giving this snap exam don't take it casually remember that you'll have to crack it you'll have to score a, score something to be in a good college so yeah remembering your goals will be giving you motivation to crack snap to have a good score and to make a strategy to attempt it so and the second will be trust your training uh, we all have been studying uh, for snap and mat cad and other entrances exam for a long period of time it is everyone's story that we study a lot to crack entrance exams uh, it is all about pressure we have been getting through all the year that okay i'll have to crack this exam i'll have to crack this exam and when the exam day comes we just doubt ourselves so just don't 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 doubt yourself have, be confident enough trust your training that okay i studied much i know this and i'll be able to crack that exam because it is all about your confidence it is all about your time management with that confidence what you do in the exam so be confident trust yourself trust your mentors trust the time you have invested in preparing for that entrance exam that will be very beneficial for you because if you are not confident you will be not able to manage your time you will not be able to identify that these are the question i should attempt or not you will not be able to follow your strategy so that is something you should be very very confident for just trust yourself just trust trust your training and just trust your time you have invested also get competitive with yourself guys um, as snap is very very near i think you should be attempting more and more uh, mocks uh, you should be practicing regularly if you are uh, getting a score of let's say 25 in one mock then just be competitive with yourself and just tell yourself okay in the next mock i'll be scoring 30 i'll be scoring 31 and if you are attempting a question it is going wrong in one mock just tell yourself that okay in the next mock i'll be attempting this right by practicing more it is all about getting competitive with yourself getting yourself in a competition that if in this mock i'm scoring this then in the next mock i'll be scoring one mark or two marks more in the next mock so yeah 
and visualize your ambitions and goals we are here to achieve our goals uh, to achieve our ambitions so just make it in the mind just keep it in the mind that i'm here for something i'll give the entrance exam and crack it just be visualizing just keep visualizing your goals that will give you a lot of motivation uh, in my times uh, with my personal experience i uh, usually uh, around my ex entrance exams time i usually try to you know merit meditate and just uh, keep myself to that confidence kind of boundary that okay i'll be able to crack it i'll be able to crack it right uh, i've read that kind of books and stuff in those days so if you want to take the, that kind of help because anything could be there it's not about just studying 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 it's uh, it's about motivating yourself too so anything which could help you just take it just talk to other people uh, increase your confidence these are some pointers which also can help you in cracking the snap exam other than study so coming to the next slide um, we would like to tell you that at uh, here at we are the students of SIDTM um, i am doing my mba in systems and finance and uh, shantanu as, uh, having... I'm doing marketing and finance, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we would like to tell you a little about SIDTM and how is MBA here. So I would like Shantanu to let you know about it. Yeah, sure. Before going ahead, I would like to add a certain point while you are talking about pushing uh, yourself through the last mile. Uh, so remember your goals. I would like to share one of my personal experience while I was preparing for the competitive exams. What I used to do that before going to sleep, I just used to watch a introduction video of my dream college. So at that period of time, while sleeping, you know that where you have to go, what you have to reach, what kind of a score you need to get there. Right. So maybe if that motivates you, you can do that. Yeah. Now uh, let's talk about why SIDTM. Uh, why SIDTM? So I am a BBA graduate. I'm a fresher. I belong to, a, let's say you can say that I'm from a commerce background. Uh, but then people think that SIDTM is all for the science and engineers, but it, it is not the fact. So here you can see a very nice blend of technology and management. So we have been discussing this a lot of times, but it is what it is like the blend of technology and management. Right now, many colleges are providing different kinds of MBA. But as we know, the talk of the town is AI, VI, IoT and whatnot. And those are the kind of subjects we are getting taught in SIDTM. So this is the most kind of relevant course you can find in the market right now. So, and it also provides a great blend of technology and management. Let's say you're an engineer. So you have the technological part, you have the technical part with you and you're learning the best, you're learning the best from the faculties about management. So that is the perfect blend anyone would require to be a techno manager in the corporate industry. Inclusive learning environment. I remember when I was not very well versed with the topics that were taught here and I was very scared that how am I going to cope up with it. There were many bridge classes that were taken twice or thrice a week to make me comfortable to uh, what we can say that make me comfortable with the atmosphere here. And also for the science sites who were not very good with finance, who were not very good with accounts, there were bridge lectures for them as well. So the faculties here take good care of you that you are not left behind and 100% placement record. Like, let's get true with ourselves that at the end of the day, after MBA, we are going for some jobs. We are looking for the placement records. We are looking at that numbers. And as we have it on our website, we'll be talking about it soon, that the placement record at SID team has been very decent. There are many great companies coming in. There are many good internship companies coming in. And that is really something to look up for. Now let's talk about the specializations offered at SIDTM. As Amrita mentioned, that she's from systems and finance. I'm from marketing and finance, and there's analytics and finance. So maybe you must be a little confused that what are the specializations? Marketing and finance, you must be uh, what we can say, you know about it. But systems and finance and analytics and finance, you must think that it is very technical. If I'm a commerce graduate, how can I take it? But let me tell you many of my batch has taken systems and finance. Most of my batch has taken analytics and finance. Uh, while being a commerce graduate, while being a fresher. So it is not the fact. You can choose whatever you want. So we talk about some tools, we talk about analysis, we talk about different tools, how we use them, data analytics, then marketing analytics as well in analytics and finance. Uh, while talking about systems and finance, we are talking about networks, we are talking about different kinds of technologies. And obviously, while talking about marketing and finance, we are uh, learning different subjects like consumer behavior, market research, and whatnot, B2B, B2C. So everything that is necessary for you to be in the corporate industry is being provided at SIDTM.
Now let's talk about the kind of figures that we have here at SIDTM. Amrita? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so here at SIDTM, the summer placements, let's talk about summer placements. Uh, so many people think that uh, the placements are very, you know, uh, tricky for the freshers, for the work eggs, and uh, there's a combination of people who will not get summer placements. But uh, we can make sure and we can tell you that the summer placements are very good at SIDTM. Um, as from our experience, we both are placed and at, a very, uh, at very good companies. Um, many companies visit SIDTM for summer placements, uh, including the big four. Uh, and the stipend rates are, you know, uh, as mentioned, the highest stipend uh, last year was two lakh fifty thousand, and the average uh, twenty five was uh, one lakh fifty four thousand six hundred. So yeah, uh, for it, it was for the batch two thousand twenty two to two thousand twenty four, but for our batch two, as um, we are in the procedure right now, the summer placements are quite good here, and uh, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, companies are here for summer placements for taking people. Uh, there are mass recruiters too. They are, they are companies, uh, international companies too, who take online interviews of students. And there are a lot of companies which are located in India, hybrid job, work more jobs. So it is all about you, who you want to be, which road you want to take, what you want to be in your life, whether it is a consulting role, whether, whether it is a marketing role. As SIDTM is about consulting and marketing and the combinations of three uh, specializations. So it's about you, what you want to be, what kind of role you want to have in your life. So it is some of placements that we talk about, it is very good. I would uh, like to advise you that if you join SID team, you'll be having combinations of various job roles uh, for your final placements, for your summer placements. Uh, the statistics for BAS 2021-2020 for the final placements uh, was uh, the highest package was 27 lakhs 83,000. Uh, top 15 was 22 lakhs 58,997, and the average top 25 was 19 lakhs 48,707. And it was the combination of pressures and work ex people. It was not about just engineer or the commerce background okay. people but it's a combination of both so just don't be afraid of joining SIDTM just because you are a commerce background just because you're, you're a fresher because if you join once you get comfortable it is it is not that difficult it's not that you can't do it we'll be able to do it because the final the placement team is working very hard here to get students placed and the curriculum at SIDTM is very focused on students to let them grow and to let them grow accordingly to their domain to their preferences so yeah that is all about placements i wanted to talk about and very true very true uh talking about uh, recruiters there are uh, so many companies which recruits in sidtm including accenture uh tata companies the global cloud exchange uh, pwc evi voice vi data communications salesforce ubex so there's a list of various companies uh if you want to check our total of uh, the amount of recruiters and the list of recruiters you can also go to the official website of SIDTM. there we, thereby you'll be able to find all the uh, recruiters list so yeah that is very right, very uh, right. Know, would you like to add some pointers yes 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 so i just wanted to add one small pointer that uh, when you come here for uh, placements, you know that there are figures running through your mind that what will I get placed. But I just want to tell you that there are very interesting job dis job descriptions. So you get to work in different kinds of areas here. And it is not limited to any kind of a field, as Amrita mentioned. And that is what it is. So uh, you can come here. And what you have here is that the courses and the cu curriculum is constantly changing according to the need of the industry according to the need of the world and that is very commendable because if you know that what is relevant in the industry you are probably the best student right there right so now i guess let's open it for the q a round and all the very best for each um, and every all the very best for each yeah. and every one of you for a snap all the best everyone for your snap attempts we wish you all the luck and we are here to uh, answer your questions. If you have any, please. Uh, yeah, Shantanu, we have a question. Uh, how to handle calculation heavy questions in SNAP exam? How to right. handle calculation? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to dig it up? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how to handle calculations, uh, the heavy calculations in SNAP exam? So let me tell you, there won't be many heavy calculations in SNAP exam for the first time. So when you're attempting SNAP, even the question makers know that you will be allotted like maximum a minute for the answer. And that is what you have to work in. That if you know the formulas, if you know what the concept we are using, then you are good to go. And if you are practicing mocks, you are good in the uh, sectional tests or you have been practicing it a lot. So it is not a very heavy process. So I don't think that that is something you should be afraid of. Yeah, I want to add something into it. Uh, yes. In SNAP, you will not be getting a, so much difficulty of in questions that you'll have to use a calculator. You just have to use your strategy, your plan that this is something because every person has their own strategy, has their own way of solving the questions. So it is not about extensive calculations. You just have to practice and you'll have to, you just, you just, you'll just be able to calculate it and answer it without extensive calculators or calculations. Yes. Yeah. The, Second question is, uh, yeah. is SIDTM good for marketing as well? Uh, um, I feel that uh, people who have marketing background or have uh, kicks in marketing, pursuing BBA, become uh, the marketing finance specialization as, as, at SIDTM has the perfect balance of uh, techno marketing specialization. So if you are if you are from a marketing background, you have so much opportunity as SIDTM because many companies uh, you know arrive at SIDTM for taking interns um, in the marketing domain for digital marketing, for marketing tools, for managers role, for product management, for project management tools. So yeah, uh, marketing is a very good uh, blend of, like marketing with finance is a very good blend of specialization as SIDT. I would like to add a small point as I'm doing marketing in finance. I would like to support it by saying that uh, we are we are talking about quantum marketing here which is very relevant and which is very new in the industry so you can take a guess that how relevant are we so if there's any new technology if there's any new concept coming in the industry sidtm is ready for it and i know that when i joined sidtm within a span of what say 15 to 20 days i was acquainted with so many new words in the marketing sector being from a BBA background, I was expected to have a good uh, basic knowledge. I had a certain basic knowledge of marketing, but after coming here, I have known very new ideas and concepts regarding marketing. And yes, it is good for marketing as well. Yeah. So the next question is, what are the key considerations to keep in mind while preparing for SNAP? Amrita, would you like to take it up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I think as we have discussed, uh, time management and confidence is the key. While you give more mocks, you'll be having more confidence. I think for me, what worked was giving mocks on a daily basis. If you are practicing, if you are if you are knowing the formulas, if you are knowing the concepts, if you are practicing regularly on mocks, if you are knowing your strengths and weaknesses, that is something which will going to help you a lot in SNAP. Because uh, in SNAP, it is not about knowing everything and just uh, doing the deep deep uh, calculations. It's about knowing the concepts on a very very basic level. So if you're knowing the concepts, if you're anal analyzing your mocks, if you are giving mocks on a daily basis, then I think that it will be very beneficial for you and you can easily crack. Some. Very true. Very true. Yeah. I would like to take up the next question from Krishnavini. That is, what are the activities which are available for students at SIDTM, right? So, my God, the facilities at SIDTM, the infrastructure is great. The campus is great. So you have the gym, you have table tennis, you have swimming pool, you have badminton, you have even squash, you have basketball, you have football ground, you have cricket. Name the sport, you even volleyball. You name the sport and Symbiosis has it. So there's no compromise in any of the facilities or any of the services that has been provided as SIDTM or all in all, I talk about Symbiosis here. So you are open to many new activities in SIDTM. Rather, also, the quality of the service is very good. I can uh, vouch for that because I have been using the gym, I have been using the swimming pool, I have been using many of the facilities and they are really good. They are well maintained and people use it a lot. Right. I completely agree with you, Shantanu. Uh, guys, I would like to say that the campus here, you will, you would love it. Like if you, if you come here, you would like, you will be like, okay, this is the campus. The campus is very pretty. We both are here at the campus, and uh, the only thing which, like, I feel that campus is that 
much beautiful that when, by, while you're out, you'll be like, okay, let's explore the campus. When you're having your holidays, we'll be like, let's stay one or two more days to explore the campus because the campus is really very pretty. And the services, the swimming pool, and the tennis, uh, the gymming facilities, everything is very much good. And uh, all facilities have their trainers along with them. So, yeah, that is something. Your social media is going to be full of the campus. That is for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. So Sneha is asking that what are the future growth opportunities we can expect after doing MBA from SIDTM? Amrita? Uh, surely I want to answer this. Uh, I feel um, I've done my BCom honors, but uh, as I joined SIDTM, I feel there are a lot of opportunities for everybody out here. While you take systems and finance, either it's marketing or finance, analytics and uh, finance, there are three specializations. And along with that, the job opportunities which come for people are very different and are very wide uh, i would like to add on uh, i feel that if you're a marketing intern you'll be like uh, having opportunities in the marketing domain if you're a systems uh, if you have taken systems you'll be uh, going into consulting or something like that you it's all about your interest so many kind of opportunities are there in sidtm it is not limited to a certain extent that okay only this capacity and only this job roles will be there it is uh, comprised, it is actually not, uh, if I could say that, uh, based on your specialization. But if you want to know about that, these are these many opportunities are there at SID team. There are so many. You can check our page too. There are so many people, there are so many alumni who are placed at good companies and which uh, doesn't have a same background. They are not the, They are not specifically engineers or commerce background or work ex people. There is a blend of every kind of person out here in SIDTM and they have all the opportunities equally. So growing in the digital domain, I feel um, knowing about technology is very essential. And when, while you're at SIDTM, you'll be like um, very much knowledgeable about the recent technology trends. You'll be knowing about machine learning, you'll be knowing about artificial intelligence. There will be IoT lab sessions. So as an individual too, uh, these are the things you should know about as currently these are the things which are very very trendy in the market so yeah uh talking about the opportunities it is very wide in its uh if shantanu want to add something i would like yeah no 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 no, no. that is great that the answer was very self-sufficient i would like to answer the next question uh sridhar adik has a question that i have identified that general english is my weak area during mocks Considering the limited time left, what specific strategies and techniques do you recommend to improve my performance in this section? Very true. Very true. I can understand. Uh, many people have that problem. It is very okay. That can be taken care of at this crucial time also. So maybe you can register for our mocks. It has a good blend of every kind of section. Uh, you can focus on the sectional tests. You can uh, you can register yourself for the mocks. You will be getting the mocks. You can have that additional kind of practice with our mocks. Also, any kind of mocks is okay. And as we mentioned during the strategies that we are talking about each section, uh, we talked about giving sectional tests, right? So if you know that you are pretty good in LR, you are pretty good in QA, now you can focus on verbal ability as well. So you can focus on your intensive vocabulary building through daily word list and reading. So you can go up on internet, you get the lists. There is plenty of information available on the internet. There's plenty of information available on YouTube as well. And maybe I would like to say that go through the figures of speech, practice basic grammar, uh, look at the questions that have been appearing in Snap for most of the years. So you know what the format is, what kind of questions come up. And if you have a good overview of everything related to that, it will be very easy for me, uh, for you. Trust trust me on that because I was having a problem on verbal ability and after giving cat you have a kind of habit to prepare for the passages and in snap you don't have any passages but that is very okay because the difficulty level is easy to moderate there are very few difficult questions coming in verbal ability so you can just you can do your basic studies try practicing through mocks do more and more sectional tests and you're good to go don't panic about it it is very easy and I'm sure that you can do it Amja, would you like to add something to this? Uh, yeah, uh, this, uh, I completely agree with you. And I want to say again that guys just don't uh, under confidence, uh, just don't feel a little confident about yourself that, OK, this is not something I can do. This is not something I am going to achieve. Because SNAP is really very uh, easy if we compare it from other exams, if we, if we compare it from CAT and NMAT. 
uh, you can easily crack it. You can easily at, uh, achieve the cutoff if you practice regularly and if you really just have a strategy and plan your mind. Um, I feel that don't skip a topic. From my personal experience, uh, skipping topics uh, is something uh, which would like uh, can uh, deduce your marks. Uh, mm. Either uh, like just go with it. Just uh, have a little knowledge about each topic so that if a patient comes, you can actually just you know skim it. Don't skip a topic because uh, there are uh, many years uh, that uh, two two to three patients can come from that topic also. So yeah, don't skip a topic. Be confident. Attempt mocks regularly. Practice regularly, and uh, give a little more time to snap uh, uh, these days rather than other things. So yeah, that is all I wanted to say. Yeah. So should I take up the next question? Uh, it's a question from Vinay. Uh, the question is, which topic should I prepare the most for quants? How is the weightage managed? So let me tell you, Vinay. Everything is important. So there's you cannot skip any topic, right? But let's talk about so that is a very generic answer i'll be answering it in detail that you can maybe prepare for arithmetic very well because in in arithmetic there are various topics that are applicable to most of the topics right so you can actually make a good collection out of it so prepare arithmetic some basic algebra some basics of geometry it is not necessary to go in deep of every topic but uh, let's say algebra if you know about the equations you know about the how to solve those equations you are good to go if you know arithmetic very well uh, i must uh, tell you that for any exam if you are very well prepared with arithmetic the 60 to 65% of job is done the other part you have to keep practicing according to exams like what the pattern is and uh, what not the exam has or doesn't have but i must say that arithmetic make it your strong side then focus on other things so even for cat even for snap even for any other exam arithmetic is very important and algebra and basics of geometry is obviously important but i must say that if you are good with arithmetic uh, you are good to go but focus on all the topics don't leave anything aside because you never know that what kind of questions are going to come you should be ready for everything and score the most yes yes so do we have any other question no i cannot find them No, I don't think so. Any more questions coming up for us? Okay. I guess Amrita, that is it. We can end our session here. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I hope everyone has a wonderful exam. All the best to every each and every one of you. All the best. Thank you so much, everyone. All the best for your SNAP exam. Yes, and please do not forget to register for mocks because they are going to help you a lot in the last moment of preparations. You can find them in the description. You can find them in the comments. Please register for them so you can have an extra kind of practice for everything. Yeah. Yes. The mocks are mentioned in the description, guys. Please look up to it and register for it for the free mocks. Also, Thank let's so mention much. about our event that is Sim Connect that we are taking on second and third. So there is a Uh, aspirant interaction program we are coming to your city we are coming to six different cities and we can meet at that time we can discuss what are your problems how uh, like what to do in the first attempt of snap if you want to uh, contact to us you can contact us there you can ask us questions regarding sidtm siu as a whole and we have all together a good campaign for all the aspirants right out there for symbiosis so meet you there at sim connect you will be getting the information on our social media platforms very soon very excited to be meeting you all yeah all the best guys we will be there to solve your questions and queries so just be there we will be help will be there to help you out will be i'm waiting thank yes. you so much everyone thank you so much thank you everyone